It's been a week since the ringgit was softened by risk aversion caused by the shock Brexit vote, but the local currency has today pushed back through the for a dollar mark, bettering its pre-vote levels. We asked FXTM's chief market analyst Jamil Ahmad if the relief is likely to continue. Financial markets, and to tell the truth, the markets were very guilty and naive to severely underprice any risk of a Brexit outcome at all. And due to the complete shock that transpired throughout Thursday evening in towards your uh, Friday morning, there was huge levels of volatility. Markets were being sold all over the place. But correct, one week later and a few days later, the markets are trying to rebalance and find some sort of uh, consistency and looking a little bit more positive. But there's a lot of uncertainty ahead. But yes, the Malaysian currency is gaining recently as well and recovering its losses. And markets looking to central banks uh, for some type of that stability that they so desire. Mark Carney saying interest rate cuts could be uh, in the offing in the next couple of months. Um, but, you know, the way the pound has been performing, we recently spoke to an analyst who said 117 could be happening. I remember at the end of 2015, when I visited London, I read a newspaper report about the possibility of the pound dollar falling to 120 at the end of 2016, if the currency really did hit the floor. Now, as we've approached that six months into that period, that call is looking quite accurate. I mean, literally, guys, there is very limited upside potential for the British pound right now. I understand the view that when a currency falls from 150, to 132 within a couple of hours, there should be a rebound. But look, the UK has got no prime minister. There's a government reshuffle, slowdowns in economic growth. The Bank of England are cutting in, uh, intervening to say, look, we might have to ease monetary policy. And on top of this, you've got the possibility that Scotland might quite well call another referendum. And to me, it just means, guys, there's very little reason to be positive on the British pound. Rebound might quite possibly be a relief rally, and there could still be some significant risk to the downside, because quite honestly, the United Kingdom stepping into uncertainty and the unknown of leaving the European Union. Be that as it may, we are seeing some pickup in emerging assets uh, with, in the second half of the year. Um, but given that risk appetite, uh, what does it mean when we still have Fed ahead when it comes to their policy decision? Look, this is where things get really interesting, and this is what I was trying to point out when I was um, making comments about how a referendum could create some anxiety for the emerging markets. Look, uncertainty in the markets can lead to a, a re reduction in risk appetite. If there's risk aversion, investors are going to be less attracted towards the stock markets. If they're less attracted to the stock markets, they're therefore not going to be so inclined towards the emerging markets. This is when the emerging market currencies then feel the pressure and bingo, this is why the Malaysian ringgit fell after the EU referendum vote. Um, now it's recovered its losses. Could the currency and the emerging markets still face downside pressure or times of uncertainty? Yes, because the global economy is now stepping into uncertainty, basically as the shock of the outcome from UK wanting to leave the European Union. Um, and in the wake of this, of course, safe havens um, seeing a shine, gold at a two-year high. Um, the yen, certainly a currency winner here. Guys, in times of uncertainty, and we will say it again and again and again, the Japanese yen is a trader's friend. And the Bank of Japan must be in an absolute frenzy right now because the currency has rebounded dramatically over the first six months of the year, and it's the complete opposite to what they want to see. Um, the Bank of Japan can't stop this. If they intervene in the markets, they're going to risk a game of cat and mouse with traders. There's still a lot more uncertainty to come, or possibly more uncertainties to come, which means there could be more significant demand for the Japanese currency. And basically, the news of the EU referendum outcome, meaning the actual outcome itself, was the worst news and a nightmare for the Bank of Japan to hear. And yes, gold obviously benefited from safe haven appeal, climbed up to a two-year high, just above $1,360. As you say, Jamil, likely more um, uncertainty to come. Um, there's expectations that the ringgit will tick back up to the 420 to 440 range by the end of the year. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? Now, this is a very interesting discussion to have. Listen, on the basis of a reduction in risk appetite, 
risk aversion in the markets and uncertainty continuing to climb a little bit higher. There is a, a new argument that the emerging market currencies could uh, rebound uh, in terms of pressure. They could fall again. However, there is a rabbit in the room. The US Federal Reserve. And absolutely nobody has yet priced into the dollar the possible ramifications and the implications the UK uh, EU referendum outcome could have on the intentions of the Federal Reserve. I personally think there's literally no chance and no way they are now in a position to begin raising interest rates once again. And if they push back these expectations, the dollar is going to be subject to violent swings down, downwards like we've seen already this year. And this might provide some sort of confidence to the M currency. So it's an interesting discussion to have. I think we need a little bit more time before anybody could accurately say where the Malaysian ringgit could um, decline to or strengthen to within six months' time.